You're watching Clubbervision. Stay with us. As the little man once said, it's time to party like it's 1999. So for the next 36 weeks, join me, Janine, as Clubbervision go in quest of the most gorgeous nights out. Yes, we're back to deliver to you an extra thick slice of deep pan club land. Tonight we light three candles in the Ultra Vegas birthday cake, chat to more DJs that you can shake a stick at, check Ministry Magazine's dance chart, and if that wasn't enough, head down to London's twice as nice. Yo, yo, what's up? It's Omar Van Helden. You're watching Club of Vision on ITV. New York, Paris, Sydney, Tokyo, Milton Keynes. Oh, the place has a reputation for being something of a Lego town. But Mark Carter and Gary Smart are about to change all that with Ultra Vegas at the sumptuous Winter Gardens. Tonight they celebrate three years of glam slam clubbing with a soundtrack from Paul Oakenfold, Tall Paul, Danny Ramplin, Jeremy Healy, Tough Jam. Oh, the list is endless. Viva Las Vegas! Danny Rampling and you're watching Club Urvision from Ultra Vegas. Enjoy. I'm sat with Mark Carter, co-promoter of Ultra Vegas in Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes has got a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a car park. Do you think that's fair? It's unfair really because it's a growing city. Um, it's a manufactured city. It's like 25 years old. It's got some nice things. Obviously the nicest thing is my complex. But... <laughs> It's been the brunt of everybody's jokes for many, many years, and this really needs to be turned around. So obviously us coming on here and saying how wonderful we are and saying how wonderful the town is and etc, etc, gets the point across that we are not just a concrete city. Has it been quite hard then to um, get it yeah. to take off here? Not take off, but get, get the recognition that we deserve. If me and Gary put this night on anywhere else in the country, we would be, you know, we were probably in the top five in the country, easily, but because we're in Milton Keynes, there is this thing where it's like, mm, it's just frowned upon because it is in the middle of nowhere. But it's, it's not. It's 50 miles away from London, 50 miles away from Birmingham. It's on the motorway. It's so accessible. We get them from everywhere, just as any big night would. Um, you know, Plymouth, Southampton, you know, Scotland, Ireland, you, know, you name it, they come. Week to week, we hit a radius of, of sort of around 30 to 40 miles. It's hard for a weekly Saturday to like be busy week in week out and we at the moment are doing that I mean every Saturday night in January we were like to capacity so we're doing something right. The Winter Garden is quite a funky place what do you think makes your night so special? We are very very orientated towards the customer they um, they pay decent money to get into our get into our establishment um, each and every Saturday night we give them some of the finest DJs around we give them high standards ice cold beers we just try and be the club around here. Do you think you're succeeding in that? At the moment we are, yes. We've worked very hard. Also the resident DJs, it's the guest DJs that have played, and it's the crowd. We have a wicked crowd, and you'll see that later on. They like listening to competent DJs. They aren't afraid to express themselves. They'll dress up, they'll look different, and they're not afraid to listen to sort of different music either. It's our third birthday tonight. Uh, if we were doing something wrong, then we we wouldn't be here. I'm sat here with Danny Ramplin, the man himself. Danny, last year's Music Magazine Award, you won the Lifetime Achievement in Dance Music. A very good moment. Um, you, you work at what you're doing and then an accolade, an accolade um, of that nature happens. And it just totally... Um, uh, expand your confidence and, and uh, just general well-being as to what you're doing so it was a really really good moment and um, a lot of good things have um, happened as a result of uh, receiving that award. You've been at the forefront of dance culture since day one you must be pretty freaked out by the way it's exploded. No I think it's marvellous the way it's exploded and the popularity that it's generated um, it's a wonderful thing what's happened to it and just within youth culture generally um, no, I'm really happy with it. Once 
once upon a time radio one actually banned dance music from the airwaves. It's now embraced it back like a long lost friend. So how do you see the role of yourself and Judge Jules, Pete Song on the airwaves now? Our role is, pr is to provide upfront quality dance music nationwide. Um, sometimes we forget that we, we live in cities like Birmingham, London and there's uh, a lot more um, out there further afield in more remote places. So how wonderful is that for young kids or an older generation, anybody just generally to tune in and, and to hear the most current music, um, which, is, um, which is groundbreaking. It's, um, the, the more exposure that dance music gets through the medium of radio, then the better it is for the scene as a whole. You also have a successful recording career and your single Community Spirit is out now. Tell us a bit about that. Um, yeah, it's soon to be released on Distance Records on March the 15th. It's um, a vocal um, house production featuring the vocals of Beverly Skeet, who comes from the R&B scene in Britain and has a fantastic voice that's full of spirit and soul. Um, so the green light's on, and it's, it's a field I want. To, I want to progress more into the field of production. So now I feel the time is right, um, and um, it's all good. <laughs> so you're boogieing your way at the ultimate, most incredible Love Groove dance party ever. What's your DJ lineup? Who would you have playing? Oh God, there's, there's about 20 different DJs. Um, David Morales, Tony Humphries, Frankie Knuckles, Danny Tanaglia, um, Sean Campbell. Um, who else? Uh, Barley and Hella. Um, I've got the list is endless, Paul Oakenfold, um, just a, probably about 100 DJs on an island for five days. What's your names? I'm Copper and I'm Chili. I'm Simon. Robert. Hamden. I'm Tracy. Yeah, I'm my sister. We're sisters. She's our friend. I met her about three seconds ago and I'd say she's very horny already. What do you think about Ultra Vegas? Um, good, lively, there's a good crowd, everybody dresses how they want, so good atmosphere. Where are you all from? London. 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 Yeah, it's huge, it's massive, it's great. My name's Alan. You got a boyfriend? No, I'm thinking. Have you both tonight then? Um, no. Oh, no. Kind of, you are kind of. <laughs> I think a, a very long lasting relationship is on its way. We come from Birmingham. Um, live in Brighton. Bedford. I'm from Berwick upon Tweed. I'm from Toasted, down the road. Gate Crusher is fantabulous. No, we're going on a big coach, there's 50 of us. Why have you come here tonight? Because it's fucking banging. Buzzing, absolutely buzzing. The night is so amazing, you would not believe it. The people are so friendly, you bump into one of them and they say, oh, sorry mate, it's like you've been back in the 1990s, it's amazing. Tonight I've had all my favourites there. I've got Oak and Fold, Healy, Tall Paul, oh. Paul Oak and Fold, Judge Dude. Yeah, me too. The best tunes that ever made, the scenes, that, the stuff, the music that made this scene what it is nowadays. No, it's just shows at the moment because it's fucking right on fire right at the moment. The music that you play, so it always gets me going. So, <laughs> anyone good looking, single? Thank you. <laughs> Think you've lost your girlfriend? Oh, bugger. It's so huge. You just walk and you're on balconies, and there's so much to see, and the gardens and the trees, it's brilliant. We always dress like this, totally mad, totally outrageous. Look at that, Love this dress. Look at this dress. Woo! Can't show no tits, but there you go. Try. <laughs> So far, so good. I hope they're going to stay. Hey, have you not spotted a bit of talent that you think, oh, I want mine a bit of him? I would, but they're snogging someone else. Mega parties go on for me. You just travel all round. Sun Essential, Ministry of Sound, God's Kitchen. Ministry, Bagley's, Cross, Legends, Emporium, Brown. All I can say is bye. Every club out there, every hardcore nutter, every jugglers out there, have a wicked time. And all the best from Beast Max Promotions and Hell to Scale at Dreamscape. Slam and Vinyl, everybody, we're all there for you. We give you what is to be the true. Goodbye! Bye. See ya! Bye. I'm sat here with Paul Oakenfold. You're looking well. I don't feel it. <laughs> I had every night last night. A couple of shots of vodka and I'll be up there ready and able. DJ Magazine's just had a poll for the top 100 DJs. And guess who came first? Our Oki. How does that make you feel? It's really nice because it was, you voted by the people. You started off your career at Spectrum and on Monday night, you don't like taking the easy way, do you? It, well, it wasn't packed every night. I mean, it, it took six to eight weeks before it started getting there. 
I mean, me and my friend were hiring the actual venue and putting the party on herself, and we were £12,000 in debt, and I didn't have £12 at that time, so we were kind of blagging our way through it, and then it started to pick up, and then we kind of broke even, and then from there it got, you know, successful, and, and it was busy every time we did it. You've heard just to mix some cream, is that like your story of Paul Oakle folded it cream? It's um, based on the two years that I was resident at the club, from the annex to the courtyard, and it's the big tunes that were big for me, not necessarily the big tunes that were big for everyone else. Which tunes are they? Oh, well, there's, there's a cross section from like Amima Assassin, Trancer, CJ Boland, Space Brothers. You know, it, it really does move across musically what I was into. You just like to play one uh, venue a night, don't you? Why is that? I can hang out, have a drink, listen to Seb because he's on before me, because I think it's important to listen to the DJ before, so we're not playing too similar, because the overall night is more important than an individual DJ. And then afterwards, kind of hang out with a promoter and, and, you know, and enjoy it. So I'm not into turning up five minutes before playing and leaving. You're involved with all aspects of uh, the music industry. You've got your own label, Perfecto, you've got productions, you've got your Galaxy Radio show. But do you still think DJing is like where it lies? Yeah, I mean, it, it, DJing has always been important to me. I, I enjoy it now more than ever. I'm working uh, on producing a, uh, a tune for the, a band called The Dope Smugglers, which is signed to Perfecto. I'm also going to be working on producing a Happy Mondays new single. And I'm working in the studio on some of uh, my own stuff. You travelled the US last year like, really extensively. Do you feel a real affinity for the country now? That was the first kind of year of, of a three year plan. I mean, we did 48 shows last year in America, going out and playing to the people all over America. We will do the same again this year and the same next year. But we think, it, I kind of think it's important that you travel out to all the, all the cities, all the towns, rather than just going to central major cities. So we, we start actually start the next part of the tour in March. Are you looking forward to that? I am actually. I love travelling. I'm really lucky with my job. But it's really hard work because every night you're in a different city. So you finish DJing at between 4 and 6 in the morning. You're up at 11, getting to the airport for 12, to get on a flight for 1, going to the next city. And then you do press and then you have something to eat, get a sleep, and then you're up again and playing. You toured with uh, you 2 on their enormous zoo tour. The whole idea of me was to basically warm the crowd up ready for them. As a professional DJ and growing up on pop popular music, I'm into Nirvana. I I buy Bob Marley or a hip hop record. So as a con you know as a as a concept, a musical concept, I was playing all kinds of music, which was the original Balearic kind of sound anyway. So I had those records and I was comfortable with doing that. And then I'd put the odd dance record here in here and there. How did they react to the uh, dance records? A lot of people were dancing actually, I was surprised. <laughs> not banging their heads on them. <laughs> no, not throwing things at me. No.